Why was the Philippines, and still is, the most wanted country in the world? The Philippines, an island nation in the Western Pacific, has had a turbulent history. It was controlled by Spain for trade purposes. It was taken over by the United States during the Spanish-American War in 1898. Despite many Filipinos wanting independence, the U.S. held on to the Philippines as a colony. During World War II, Japan invaded the islands, leading to terrible atrocities. It was not until after the war that the Philippines finally gained independence. 30,000 years ago, when sea levels were lower, people could reach the Philippine islands from places like Indonesia through land bridges. In recent times, contact with Asia and the Pacific started around 1000 CE with traders and missionaries. Islam began spreading in the late 1200s and became the main religion by the mid 1400s. Arab traders introduced Filipino products to the Chinese, who then traded regularly in the Philippines for items like spices, scented wood, and cotton. The first clear mention of the Philippines in historical records was in 972 CE. Trade between China and the Philippines was strong. Formal diplomatic relations between China and the Philippines began in the 1300s. In March 1521, Magellan, a Portuguese explorer working for Spain, was the first Westerner to arrive in the Philippines. This marked the beginning of Filipinos' exposure to Christianity, as Magellan invited leaders to join Catholic Mass. But a conflict arose a few weeks later between Filipino forces and Magellan's crew because the locals did not want Spanish control. In 1543, the Spanish returned to the Philippines and took over the islands. Twenty years later, the Spanish finally gained control of the Philippines under Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, who made Manila the capital of the Philippines. The Spanish wanted to establish trade with China and Japan in their new Pacific colony. Unlike their colonization of the Americas, King Philip II of Spain ordered that violence against native Filipinos to be avoided. Similar to the social structures in the Americas, the Philippines became a busy trading center in the Pacific, leading to conflicts with Spain, the Netherlands, and Britain. The 1800s saw a rise of independence movements in Spanish colonies. Independence movements began to grow in the Philippines, evolving into armed conflicts between Filipinos and the Spanish government by the mid-1890s. America seized on this revolt, plus a similar one in another Spanish colony close to the state of Florida, Cuba, to try to gain geopolitical control over these desirable territories. The American fleet destroyed the Spanish fleet guarding the Philippines in the Battle of Manila Bay. Swiftly, almost 11,000 US soldiers were sent to the Philippines to capture the capital city, Manila, and seize the Spanish colony. On August 13, one day after the Spanish-American War, U.S. troops captured Manila after a brief battle. In the brief war, a crushing American victory created a new American empire. The Philippines, Cuba, Guam, Puerto Rico were ceded by Spain in the peace deal. In exchange, the U.S. paid Spain $20 million for the entirety of the Philippines. Many Filipinos were outraged that instead of being granted independence, they were remaining a colony under a new master. Under nationalist leader Emilio Ginaldo, armed uprisings began against the United States. In early 1899, the United States maintained control over the Philippines. As the war raged, many prominent Americans criticized the colonization, insisting that holding a colony violated Americans' core values, especially since the country had once been a colony of Britain. Aguinaldo, a young general, initially tried to fight a war against America. When he couldn't take Manila at the beginning, he switched to guerrilla tactics due to lack of supplies and little international support. After Aguinaldo was captured in 1901, the fighting ended the next year. From 1902 until the start of World War II in the Pacific, America had complete control of the Philippines. William Howard Taft, a future U.S. president, was the first governor general appointed by the U.S. In the early years, there were occasional clashes between U.S. troops and Filipino rebels. In 1909, General John 
person known for his role in World War I took charge of the Moro province. After these conflicts settled down, the Philippines gained more independence under the Jones Act of 1916. The Jones Act gave Filipinos some American rights and a bit of freedom from American laws. On December 8, 1941, shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japan invaded the Philippines. They launched air raids that caught many American planes on the ground. American planes on the ground then landed soldiers on December 22nd, basing about 32,000 American soldiers and many Filipino soldiers. The US and Filipino forces retreated to Bataan Peninsula as they were outnumbered and not well equipped. In the end, the American Filipino troops on Bataan resisted for four months until April 1942. After surrendering on April 9th, the Japanese made thousands of American and Filipino prisoners of war. In late October 1944, the US military came back to the Philippines in a big way. This was during the Battle of Lady Gulf, which was the biggest naval battle of World War II and perhaps in all of history. On February 1945, US troops reached Manila, which led to the Battle of Manila lasting a month. Unfortunately, the fighting caused extensive damage to the city. Under US President Harry Truman, the Philippines became fully independent on July 4th, 1946. Truman saw this as the end of nearly 50 years of occupation. In 1964, the country changed its Independence Day to June 12th, the day Amelia Ginaldo declared independence in 1898. The independence of the Philippines was a huge deal for Filipinos, but it did not have a big impact on the United States. One reason for this is that many US policymakers already expected the Philippines to become independent eventually. Unfortunately, independence did not immediately mean peace and prosperity for the Philippines. A rebel movement lasted from 1946 to 1955, accompanied by a violent national movement from 1949 to 1950. During this time, the Philippines re-emphasized close ties with the United States to help ensure its national security. The MPA rebellions lasted into the 1900s and 2000s, with the US backing the Filipino government against the rebels. Nowadays, the MPA has fewer members, down to a few thousand from about 25,000 in the early 1980s. Despite the ongoing conflict, the MPA rebels Philippines has grown rapidly in population, from 18 million in 1946 to 116 million today. This growth rate was much faster than the global average, but led to economic challenges like high unemployment and large government debt. The Philippines is in a key spot next to the South China Sea. which puts it at risk of conflict with a growing superpower, China. China claims most of the South China Sea, which overlaps with the Philippines' waters. Since 1999, the two countries had argued over land rights in the area, made more complicated by many small islands. Over the last 10 years, the conflict in the South China Sea has been constantly in the spotlight. As China builds islands in the middle of the South China Sea, once underwater reefs have become sandy islands with airfields, roads, buildings, and bases for missile systems. In less than two years, China has turned seven reefs into seven military bases, making the South China Sea one of the most contentious areas of sea in the world. Its importance is not limited to that. The ocean area is estimated to contain 11 billion barrels of oil. 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Even more importantly, roughly 30% of the global maritime trade passes through the South China Sea on its way to the highly trafficked ports in Southeast Asia. Thanks to these aspects, the South China Sea is a contested maritime area which is subject to claims of partly possession by five countries. The South China Sea is the primary source food accounting or 8% of the world's total commercial fishery production and is responsible for feeding many of today's most populous nation, from Pakistan's 226 million people to China's 1.4 billion citizens. As a result, the South China Sea being one of the most important economic and strategic regions in the world 
is undeniably essential to Southeast Asia's way of life. Tensions escalate from time to time to stop just short of turning into armed conflict. Although the states having interest push provocation to the maximum, but they have never risked the war that would be particularly deadly in this region. And that would have terrible consequences for the economy and world peace. Recently, China's navy has been accused of bothering Filipino ships, even using strong lasers that could harm Filipino sailors' eyesight. The Philippines is stuck in a struggle between America and China, both geographically and historically. China thinks the Philippines on the side of America and could be used as a military base if there is a fight between the two big powers, especially regarding Taiwan. The Philippines announced on April 3rd that the location of four military bases that the US will gain access to have been identified. These bases, an expanded part of the defense agreement between the two countries, will allow the US to approach Taiwan from the south in the event of war. There are speculations that Filipino soldiers might be used as pawns in a big war over Taiwan. As China's military gets stronger, it's harder for the Philippines to stay independent, especially if there is war in the Pacific. A US presence at new military facilities in the Philippines as part of its Indo-Pacific strategy will increase the potential for America to influence the situation in the Taiwan Strait and South China Sea. One of the strategic intentions of the US is to build a base on Balabat Island as it could provide future support and logistics in any future military operation in the region. Three of the new bases could be used primarily by American military to respond to any situation in the Taiwan Strait from the south. This could work alongside their bases on the north of Taiwan, specifically those in Okinawa in southern Japan. In this way, the new bases in the Philippines will fill in the gap in the south. The Philippines actually has the second largest gold deposit in the world. The Talana family in the Philippines owned a vast amount of gold, and the former president, Ferdinand Marcos, obtained his family's unexplained wealth by receiving some of the Talana gold as payment for the legal services he provided to the Talana family. The gold reserves were used to fund the Vatican and the gold was also instrumental in starting the World Bank. The extensive use of gold during early Philippine history is well documented, both in the archaeological record and in the various written accounts from the pre-colonial and early Spanish colonial times. Gold was used throughout the Philippine archipelago in various decorative and ceremonial items, such as clothing and as currency.